Hello everybody, Sky Marshall here in the Lion's Den bringing you another review. Turn of, uh, where are we at? 1939, January 1939. So, uh, well, let's just dive right in there. Uh, you see that? Yeah, that happened. Um, Paris, actually all of France fell. Um, and Paris didn't fall, actually it was encircled. But uh, the French did surrender and, uh, well, this is what happened. The Germans um, now occupy it. Uh, just, you may notice some British Randalls around there. Well, the British decided to come back and land some troops on a raid in Picardy and um, bring a transport over into Normandy and drop an airborne in Alsace-Lorraine just to harass the Germans right now. Um, so that's interesting. The, uh, the French though, however, the Vichy really did want to side with the, the Germans this game, and uh, we have a whole bunch of ships here in ports that uh, that have sided with them. Two battleships, a uh, light cruiser, um, sub, destroyer, pretty much anything that uh, you'd want in the Navy, it uh, ended up in French hands. So consequently, uh, the Germans were busy there, but they were also busy in Poland. They uh, raided these territories, as well as the Soviets came in and uh, took over their eastern um, counterparts, and Poland is no more, sadly. But that's not all what the Germans did. Down here, um, in the South Atlantic here, U-857 raided uh, and sunk three million tons of, uh, of shipping here in the Atlantic, but also her counterparts over here in Northern Australia, U-889 and U-170, along with the capital ship Admiral Graf Spey, the battle cruiser, well, guess what? They sunk two million tons of shipping just off Australian shores. Um, so that was a good victory for the Germans and didn't lose any ships in the process. However, though, the British did decide to fight back a little bit. Um, and what they did is they did their own raids here in the North Atlantic. Um, and the HMS Repulse went up here and took two million tons of shipping of iron ore being uh, shipped out of Norway and Sweden here. Uh, further south, same thing. We have one million tons of shipping uh, that was intercepted by the uh, HMS Spiteful, a submarine lurking in the Baltic uh, Ocean, or the uh, Baltic Sea right now. So consequently, Denmark also did fall, and uh, that should not be there. Denmark also did fall, um, as well as Switzerland. The entire international banking consortium is in an uproar right now. Um, and on top of that, Hungary decided to join the fight and uh, join the Germans too. So a lot of good things have been going for the Germans right now. Um, and you can see uh, Belgium and the Netherlands have been left alone this turn. But for how long? We'll have to wait and see. Um, deployments of British forces in the Atlantic. Well, they uh, broke up their two battleships, the King George V and Prince of Wales. Um, they have been stationed here on some convoy duties to hopefully protect some of the convoys. The Glorious, or sorry, the Courageous, um, in air support. And down here further south, we have the Eagle with a new fighter squadron dispatch, uh, dispatched from, I think, uh, the Indian carrier off of the, uh, the HMS Furious there with the Norfolk and the Ajax. So that's what they're doing right now is trying to guard a lot of these major convoy routes. Um, over here off Canada, the Sussex and the Erebus um, are leading the charge to defend eastern coastline convoy routes as well. So interesting. Of course, the Americans haven't done much. They're just sitting pretty and doing their thing. Uh, the Soviets, however, decided, you know what? We like some of these territories. So uh, we decided to annex Estonia, uh, Latvia, and perhaps Lithuania will be next on the cutting block. Bessarabia, we uh, marched in there and annexed that territory uh, from the Romanians, and they're not very happy about that. I wonder where they're going to side with, so we'll see. However, there is a mutual um, pact between the great German and Soviet states, and currently right now we have the molotov ribbentrop pact signed, and now the Graf Zeppelin and the Hindenburg um, are 
mainly restricted to these type of runs between Moscow, Berlin, Prague, all these areas right now because it's not a war zone in this area because we're all happy friends. So we'll see where that ends. Uh, CCP is having a tough time. They're just held up in the mountains. They can't break free this game anywhere to influence any warlords. But, you know, it's a long game. We'll see what happens. KMT is starting to grow. Look at that stack of cavalry there in Sheshwan. Um, so there's not much the CCP can do about it. Uh, and over here, the Japanese finally have retreated back off uh, the Manchukuo territory here and gone down into Korea, possibly aiming for an attack in China. But the Americans, seeing Japanese aggression as a possible threat here, have uh, fortified the Hawaiian Islands with an actual fortification, brought over several planes, um, medium bomber, tactical bombers, fighters, and the bulk of their surface fleet uh, in the Pacific is here too, uh, with the battleships, destroyers, and cruisers. We do have, or have been spotted, I-19 lurking off the coast of Hawaii right now. Um, so we don't know what they're doing, if they're on a, on a espionage or sightseeing tour, who knows, we'll have to see. However, intelligence has given us a simple uh, glimpse of what's uh, in the Palau Islands right now. And you can see this is an impressive battle fleet right here. Uh, it's only getting larger and larger um, and quite an invasion force to begin with as well. So we'll have to see what happens um, possibly next turn if the Japanese decide to break free or if they're just going to stay there and uh, fortify this island with this rare mineral unobtaining or something like that. Who knows? Japanese, weird people. And then over here, speaking of weird, Siam decided to join in with the Japanese as well. Um, and consequently, their ships are now in the service of the Japanese. And the uh, Fubuki uh, destroyer um, came over here to uh, do a tour of Siam and see the new territories that's under the Japanese rising sun. Over here, down here, the only free French boat, the Acheron. She, uh, fleet submarine, is now patrolling the Indian Ocean, helping her British counterparts, and the HMS Springer as well. Force Z in the Red Sea um, is sizable, and it's a very big international force of Australian, New Zealand, and British. But further south, we have the Italian sub, the Torelli, um, on patrol. But we have British counterparts down here uh, protecting the C Cape Town uh, trade routes as well. But we know that U-857 is lurking in these waters, so they'll probably try to see if they can seek and hunt her down before any more damage happens. But anyways, guys, this has just been a rough go over of what's been going on uh, in January of 1939. And we'll see what's going to be happening in, oh, I don't know, July of 1939, before we even get to 1940, and uh, see what happens with uh, the remaining French, uh, Free French, and all the other um, nations that are going to put a stop to or fight against the tyranny and the oppression uh, of fascism. So anyways, guys, take care. Sky Marshall here in the Lion's Den signing out, and we will all see you in the tail end of 1939.